Thou shalt truly tithe all thy, thy increase of thy seed. It says, Thou shalt truly tithe the increase of thy seed. It's talking about your crops. Read. That the, fi that the field bringeth forth and, year by and, year. And that's what it, it said, that the field bringeth forth year by year. So y'all shall truly tithe the seed that, the, that your field brings forth year by year. Read. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God. Last time I checked, you don't eat money. Read. And the place which he shall choose to place his Name there. And we know that was Jerusalem. The Most High chose Jerusalem. Read. The tide of all thy corn. The tide of what? All thy corn. Uh-huh. Of thy wine. Uh-huh. And of thy or oil. Uh-huh. And thy firstlings of thy herds. And the firstlings of thy herds. So now it's going into your, your, your livestock, your cattle. Read. And of thy flocks. Say it again. And of thy flocks. Wait, no. What'd you say? So we don't have those things now? No, we, we tithe like money now. No, but I'm saying, no, but I'm saying we, don't have, we don't have animals now? We have animals, but we don't tithe by them. Okay. But I'm, I'm gonna, let, me, let us finish. Let us read through the whole thing and listen, listen to what the Bible is saying. Don't, don't pay attention to what I'm saying. Listen to what the, open your mind to what the Bible is saying. Read. Three. That thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. So we, so we paid our tithe so that we could learn to fear God always. And the tithe was our livestock, it was our crops. Read. And if thy way be too long for thee. So because the, all of the males was, the uh, desert was commanded to go to Jerusalem three times in a year. So everybody wasn't in Jerusalem. Some people had to travel to Jerusalem because that's what the Most High chose to place his name there. So some people had to travel. So he said, read it again. And if, he, if the way be too long for thee. Uh-huh. So if that way to Jerusalem be too long, read. So that, that, so that thou art not able to carry it. Uh-huh. Or the place be too far for thee. Uh-huh. Which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there. Uh-huh. When the Lord thy God has blessed thee, then shalt thy turn into money. Turn it into money. So now we hear, okay, we hear money. So we had money back then. It wasn't just livestock. So it says, if the way be too long for you, turn it into money. Turn your, 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 your tithe, which was your crops. It didn't say that the tithe was money. It said, turn it into money. Read. What else does it say do? And bind up the money uh -huh. in thy hand and shall go into the place where the Lord thy God shall choose. Which was Jerusalem. Read. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Uh-huh. For oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. And, uh -huh. and thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thy household. Uh -huh. Verse 27, this is the point. And the Levite that is within thy gates, thou shalt not forsake him. For he has no part nor inheritance with thee. So now my next question, after we read that, who was the tithe for? Who was the tithe for? The tithe was for the Levitical priest. The tithe was for the Levitical priesthood. Because when you when you you can't disconnect the Old Testament from the New. The tithes was for the priest because the Levites didn't have an inheritance amongst the other 12 tribes. So the reason for the tithe was to sustain the Levitical priesthood. That's why we did what we did. That's why we gave the tithe because the, 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 the Levites were dedicated to the Most High. He took care of them. And as we just read, the tithe was not money. The tithe was your crops and your livestock. So fast forward to today. Money is a description. The Bible says money is a defense. So do y'all understand that? That's what the tithe. The tithe was not money. It never was. 
never will be. But that's what it is now, right? It's your no. earnings. No. And it's, uh, it's supposed to be ten percent of your earnings. Because the, the thing of the tithe was for the <laughs> Levitical priesthood. Do we have? Do we still have a temple today? True. We still have a temple, but no, we don't. Uh, we don't. The well, temp our temple was destroyed in 70 A.D. Oh, okay. Well, that's going too far back. No, but that's, that's, what, that's what I was saying. When it comes to us knowing our nationality, our heritage, the Bible is our heritage. So yeah, we if we don't know our heritage, we a lot of the things that we... we uh, no. World. Because this is the thing. Like, our mind, we say we're in a different time. But... Does God change? Nope. No. And we still and we, we, we ain't so change. We still supposed to be getting ten percent no. of our earnings. No, because that's out of our power. The the God changed that. The, well, he, I didn't say he changed it, he fulfilled it through Christ. The priesthood changed. But that was from the beginning. So we don't pay tithes today. Not saying that now, I'm with that, not saying that. You have a church, you don't give alms. You give what you're able to give, not what they told you. They told you 10%. You give what you're able. But even still now, you know, they ask you for 10% of your earnings. Right, but that's not biblical. That's the, that's the, whole, the whole gist of it is that's not biblical. Because one, they're not the, they not the Levitical <laughs> priests. Because that's what it was for. And if we truly going to give tithe, you're going to give the lot from your crops. You're going to give your crops. We'll read that. It's the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, the sons of Jacob are not consumed. Mm -hmm. So give me a Hebrew, real quick, and then we'll go back to 13 and 8. Yes, sir. Seven, Hebrews 7 and 12. For the priesthood being changed, there is made a necessity, a change of the law. So it's for the priesthood being changed, there's a change of a necessity of the change of the law, because Christ came to die for the nation of Israel. He was the sacrifice. So the priesthood changed. Now he is the high priest. Whereas in the Old Testament, the, Levit the, Le the Levites were the priests. You had to be a Levite, and then the high priest were come, came from the lineage of Aaron. So. That's what we gave the tithe to because it sustained them. But now Christ has come and died, that sacrificial loss, because we don't sacrifice no more. But the reason we don't sacrifice is because Christ was that ultimate sacrifice for the nation of Israel. So the priesthood has changed. Can we, where Christ is sitting right now, can we give him a tithe? Can we give him livestock crops? No, we can't. No, we can't. So with that, we can't, the, the tithe is the beginning. One more. Give me 1 Corinthians 9, and then we're going to move on. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Because now, because in the New Testament, because uh, most churches teach that we're under the new covenant and that Christ gave two commandments. In the New Testament, where do you find tithe? What do you find it, that it says, give your tithe? You don't, because it's not in there. But read that. This is the book of first, Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. But, I, but, I, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Uh -huh. So this is a, a person that sows sparingly. It says you're going to reap sparingly. So I mean, if, you, if you have a lot, but you only give little, you're going to reap little. Read. And he which soweth bountiful shall reap also bountiful. It's meaning that if whether you got a lot or, or a little, if you give according to what you have, but you give abundantly, it says you're going to have an abundance. Read. Every man according as he proposes in his heart. So it said every man as he purposed in his heart. It don't say every man got to give 10%. It say every man as he purposed in his heart. So that's in the New Testament. You don't find tithing in the New Testament. But 
to go back to where we were. Go to do the, go to the next slide. But what we're showing, the whole purpose of what we're showing is, go to the next slide, is showing that our history is in the Bible. We are the Israelites according to the Bible. And when you examine our communities, the bad things that go on in our communities is because we broke God. We're breaking God's commandments because we're celebrating things like Thanksgiving and, uh, and Christmas. We're celebrating, ho ho holy, we're celebrating holidays that you can't find in the Bible where the, where the Most High God said, keep this day. Um, it's, read, read Deuteronomy 28 and 21. Verse 21. The Lord shall make the pestilence. Let me start over. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave into thee until he have consumed thee from off the land, uh -huh. whether thou goest to possess it. So this is another one of the curses. That when you examine our communities, who has the highest percentage of disease? Because when you say pestilence is disease, we got the highest percentage of disease. We do. We we the minority, but yet we have the, we we lead in all type of diseases. When you come, these are some that's been on a wide scale. But you got H1N1, Zika virus, Ebola, COVID nineteen. Uh, West now is it another the next slide got some more but just to extend past that um, you have diabetes high blood pressure um, give me some more um, STDs heart disease we lead we the minority but we lead in all these things it's not happenstance it's not just because it's it's because of how we eat, but the reason it's like that is because we broke God's commandments. Because we're not keeping the commandments of God. That's why the bad things, because like I said, the church cannot give these solutions because they don't know the solutions. They, they're teaching that you don't have to keep the commandments. But yet, if we keep the commandments, things will change. Because we had the commandments, ain't, it, with the, keeping the God's laws, it's supposed to be our religion. And our, when you say religion, it's, it's a discipline. When you, when you subject yourself to keeping the commandments of God, that shows that you have, you, you're disciplining yourselves to, hey, even though I desire to do this, the Bible say do that, so I'm going to do that. Even though you may have a desire to, like, what the things that go on in our, in our community. Fornication. Accordingly, you're supposed to live by. Exactly. Right. It's, it's our code. Like a lot of a lot of people say, uh, Bible means basic instructions before leaving Earth. So if it's the basic instructions before leaving Earth, why are majority of our people not following the instructions? Because uh, they being. Because I think a, one a sister said before, earlier when I think a sister says earlier when I asked about Thanksgiving, she said she keep it. She do it just because that's how she was raised up. And that's what, the, that's what the problem is. We're raised up in various customs and traditions that when we hear the Bible say what it say, we say, no, nah, that's not what it is. We got to do this. When, because when you, and, I, and I, I've, I, was, I've, I went to the Christian church. I've been there. So I know what's, I know what's taught. Ninth, Nine out of ten times when you go to a Christian, into a Christian church, if not ten out of ten times, that pastor is not reading the Bible. That pastor is going to read one scripture and do an hour sermon about that one scripture and say all type of stuff out of his own mind. So in essence, what, in reality, what you're doing is following what a man says. You're not following the Bible. So when somebody comes and say, read, the, read what the Bible says to you, your mind is going to divert back to the leader that you've been following that's been leading you astray because everything that he said repeatedly over and over and over again, that's what's in your mind. So when you hear the Bible and hear what the Bible actually says, you automatically reject it. So what we have to do as a people, the only way we're going to solve the problems in our community, we have to pick up the Bible, read it, and do what it actually says to do. We got to stop. We have to stop following what these 
Christian pastors are telling us. Other than that, we live in like the world. Exactly. 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 Uh, go to the next slide. Um, next slide. Well, actually, go, go read that. Go back to 22. Read 22. Because 20. we also mentioned, we mentioned Thanksgiving. And we understand that Thanksgiving, the, 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 the real reason for Thanksgiving is actually Thanksgiving because they came over here and slaughtered the Native Americans and took over their land. And then they said, Thanksgiving, thank God for giving me this land. No, you came over here and slaughtered the people and took over the land. But some of the things that happened, the history, uh, from a historical point, read that, verse 22. Verse 22, the Lord shall smite thee with a consumption uh -huh. and with a fever and with an inflammation and with extreme burning uh -huh. and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew and they shall... And they shall pursue thee until thou perish. So this is just more diseases. Go to the next slide. Next slide. Next. Next. Uh, next. Verse 35. The Lord, verse 35. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed. From the sole of thy foot and to the top of thy head. So here we see here, this is one of those curses. I should have warned y'all before, before we pulled this up. But this is one of the curses. What is it, another, another image? That's it. So keep that on and read that again. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore Watch that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot to the top of thy head. So dealing with one of the things and one of the other things that happened. Uh, I thought I had it up. One of the other things that happened when, when they came over here and took over this land. <clears throat> uh, what was it called? It just slipped my mind. When they had the blankets. Smallpox. Smallpox. This image is not smallpox, but this is similar with the image. I thought I had a, a picture of it where it could show you where they came over here in deceit and gave the Native Indians blankets. And when they put it on, they got smallpox. That's, that's what this is. That's what the curse is. That's, what that, that's another one of the, 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 pro, the fulfilled prophecies of that curse. You break my commandments, and this is what's going to happen. So we celebrate Thanksgiving, but yet Thanksgiving, and I'm going to stop saying Thanksgiving. It's actually Thanksgiving. We celebrate a day that was designated off the, the we celebrate a day that was ordained, for lack of better terms, on the breast of killing the people, killing the nation, the people. And we celebrate it blindly, and, and our justification is Oh, we giving, we, we spending time with our family to give thanks. Um, last time I checked, we supposed to spend time with our family all year. And we supposed to be thankful all year for all things. So why do we wait for one day? So that means you could be evil all year and not be thankful for your brother, your sister, your family, your mother, your sister. And then when Thanksgiving come, now you put on a phony face. Oh, I'm, it's for the family. But you ain't seen your family all year. And that's what it creates. Not saying that everybody does that. Not saying that everybody don't, don't spend time with their family all year, but that's the, that's the deception that's put out there. Because if you celebrate, um, if you're celebrating a day that's not designated for us to celebrate in the Bible, what is that called? Pagan holiday. It's a pagan holiday. It's idolatry. And the first commandment is, let's read it real quick. It's idolatry, and this goes to Christmas as well. We celebrate Christmas when Christmas is a pagan holiday. Christmas has no origin in the Bible, but we celebrate it freely, like it's nothing. Yes, I have a verse on what you're talking about now. It's in um, Galatians uh, 4 and 10. You're talking about 
talking about a judge and Dave. That's what you're talking about. Uh-huh. Huh? Mm-hmm. You're talking about a judge. It says in Galatians 4 and 10, it be observed days and months and times of years. I'm afraid of you. It ain't supposed to be no special day. Every day is supposed to be special. So why do we... You wake up and open your eyes, you're supposed to say thank you, Lord, for being alive. So do you celebrate Thanksgiving? No, I do not. Do you celebrate Christmas? No, I do not. Do you celebrate birthdays? I celebrate every time I wake up and my eyes is open, I say thank you, Lord, for another day. That's a good thing. But that scripture that you just pulled, you don't, that, that's a, you don't understand. It is special days because the Most High ordained special days. You go on according to the Word of God says you observe these things in practice. But what you your understanding is wrong. I'm reading. What Pertaining to you reading what it say, but you don't understand it. And because because that's not what we are here for, I'm not I'm not gonna address it right now. But we can address it. Read where we at again. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 3. So let me ask you this. You don't celebrate Thanksgiving, right? I don't celebrate no special day. Every day is special. So this is my, my question. Listen to my question. Listen to my question. You don't, do you celebrate Thanksgiving? No, I celebrate Yes or no? It's a yes or no? Okay. So you don't celebrate Thanksgiving? No, I do not. I just, I just said that the Bible is against Thanksgiving, and you pulled the scripture for I don't know what reason, but if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, why are you offended? What, what Bible uh, are you reading? The King James Version. Who? The King James Bible. King James Version? Yes. But I'm reading something. Read that. Well, December 25th is not a special day to you? No. Why not? I mean, what Bible scripture is it? I said, why not? What Bible in the I King James Version is it? Because, because it wasn't ordained by the Most High God. That's your opinion. That's my opinion? Okay. So, y'all jumping ahead, but we're going to address it. Christmas, December 25th. Get Jeremiah. What scripture is it? What scripture says that December 25th is Jesus Christ's birthday? But you just said that. Who said it? Are you in agreement with it? No, I'm not agreeing with her. She was by her friend. Okay. Read, let's read that real quick. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 1. Hear ye the word which is spoke, spoken against you, O house of Israel. So you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, you don't celebrate Christmas. I'm with you. I'm with you because I don't celebrate it either. Read. Then why do you believe in the Bible? Read. I'm going to show you. Thus it ain't said, in there. Read. Thus said, thus said the Lord... Learn not the way of the heathen. So the Bible says, learn not the way of the heathen. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Uh-huh, because the other nations, they, 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 looked at, they look at the sun, the moon, and stars as God. Read. For the heathen are dismayed at them. Uh-huh. For the customs of the people are vain. It says the customs of the people are vain. So the customs of the people are anything that goes against what the Bible says. Read. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. Uh, soon. That's, that's, does that sound? It says one cutteth a tree out of the forest. What happens? What, what happens on Christmas? Where do they get them trees from? When you get a live tree, where do they, they get that tree? They get it out the forest. Read it again. Read one, it again. For one cutteth the tree out of the forest. So for one cutteth the tree out of the forest. Read. The work of the hands of the workmen uh -huh. with an axe. With an axe, read. They deck it with silver, silver and gold. They deck it with silver and gold. What, 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 what holiday here in America do we deck a tree with silver and gold? Christmas. 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 And we just read, follow not the way of the heathen. But now we're reading in the Bible. Read on. It said, follow not the way of the heathen because they, they cut a tree after, after they cut a tree out of the forest and deck it with silver and gold, read on. They fasten it with nails they, and with hammers. They fasten it with nails and hammer. So that's how it stands up. They have a tree stand, they got the screws that go on the side, and that's how the tree stands up in your living room. Read. That it move not. That it move not. It can't move anyway because it ain't got no life in it. Read. They are upright as a palm tree. They are upright as the palm tree. In ancient times, before they used the palm tree, it's the, the Christmas that we celebrate today. 
is the same pagan holidays that they celebrated in time past. And we're going to read a little bit of history on it. Read. But speak not. But they speak not. Read. They must need to be born. They must need be born. Some, somebody got to put some life into them because they don't have no life. It's a tree that was cut out of a forest. Read. Because they cannot go. They cannot go. Read. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Uh-huh. So when you celebrate Christmas, you're celebrating idolatry. You're breaking the first commandment of God. It's idolatry. That's what it is. In your mind, you could think, oh, it's for the children. No. According to the Bible, it's idolatry because it's a heathenish custom. Uh, read this real quick. This is the sort of book we're about to read is The Two Babylons, the historical book. Page 97. We're going to read a couple, just read the highlighted parts. The candles of some parts of England, the candles of some parts of England lighted on Christmas Eve and used so long as a fest, festive season lasts, were equally lighted by the pagans. On it, the, was, it was what? Were equally light, lighted by the pagans. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's pagan. Okay, read. On the eve of the festivals of the Babylonian God. Of the who? Babylonian God. The Babylonian God. That's not the God of the Bible. Read. To do honor to him. Mm -hmm. For it was one of the distinct, dis, dis, distinguishing peculiarities of his worship to have lighted candle, candles at his altars. Mm -hmm. The Christmas tea, tree. Now the so, Christmas tree, so now it's addressing the Christmas tree. Read. The Christmas tree, now so common among us. It's now so common. Everybody going to get a tree, whether they got a fake tree or they go buy a live tree. Read. Was equally common in the pagan Rome and pagan Egypt. It was equally common in the Bible. Pagan Rome and pagan Egypt. No, nah, the word of God. Pagan Rome and pagan Egypt. So the Christmas tree is a pagan custom, but yet... Many of our people follow it today because it's for the kids. Yeah, you, yeah, you can read it. Read it. Definition of pagan. A person holding religious beliefs other than those of the main or recognized religion. Um, let me see. Religious beliefs other than those of the main or recognized. A pagan God. So when you're. Similar. So a Sun pagan. Diary. So a pagan follows customs that are outside of the Bible. And the entirety accounts of the putting of the Yule log into the fire on Christmas Eve and the appearance of the Christmas tree that the next morning. So they made it seem like the tree, the tree just puffed out of nowhere because they put the Yule log in the fire. Go to the next page. No, you know what? Christmas is pagan. Go to Colossians 2 and 8. Huh? Yeah, they do it every year. But the thing about it is we have to understand as a people that we're not supposed to be celebrating that, partaking in that celebration because it has nothing to do with us. Because even when you just read, when you, when you, when you look into history, we were slaves. What do you think they were doing with us on, on Christmas? They were, they were, we were the gifts. We were the gifts. But now today, oh, it's for the kids. So you can't give your children gifts throughout the year? You got to wait till Christmas to spend thousands of dollars that you probably didn't have and, give your, and, put, and put gifts under a tree? That's a sign of worship. That's a sign that, no, you're not, you're not serving the God of this Bible because the God of this Bible tells you that that's a heathenish custom. Read that. It's the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you. So the Bible says, beware lest any man spoil you. When you, when you think of spoiled milk, is you going to go in the refrigerator and drink it after it's spoiled? No, that means that don't let nobody spoil you or destroy you. Read. Through philosophy and vain deceit. Through philosophy and vain deceit. Oh, no, Christmas is just for the kids. You ain't got don't. Don't worry about the tree. It's for the kids. No, that's, 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 that's a philosophy of men. They're spoiling you. They're destroying your spirit because they're turning you away from the Most High God. Read. After the tradition of men. After the tradition of men. 
If you can't find it in the Bible, you shouldn't be doing it. Christmas is not in the Bible in the light of, oh, celebrate this day. Go get you a Christmas tree, put, it, put some lights on it, put a, a star on the top of it, and put gifts under it. You can't find that in the Bible. Christmas should be no day. No, Christmas should be no day. Just to be simple and plain, Christmas should be no day because it's not in the Bible. I'm just saying if you're going to give a present or stuff, that you should do that every day, not waiting on the 25th of December. If you're going to give somebody a gift, you do it, you do it when you feel to give them a gift. Christmas is not in the Bible, so you shouldn't be celebrating Christmas. That's a that's that's Jesus. But uh, my question again, they say it's they say it's Jesus' birthday. What scripture is it? What scripture says that it's G that December twenty fifth is Jesus' birthday? It's my birthday too. But what scripture says that that's Jesus' birthday? There isn't it's, nobody knows because it's not there, sis. It's not in there. What's your question? What religion are you? Because I'm putting away, I'm a Baptist, and I believe in Christian and whatnot. What, what religion are you? Give me 1 Maccabees. Is it 1 Maccabees 3? I'm going to let you know what my religion is. 348, 248. Um, that's 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 2. Yeah, first Maccabees. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you ask me what my religion was. First Mac no, first Maccabees chapter two. Yeah. So I'm a, this is my this is you said what's my religion? First this Maccabees. is my religion. First Maccabees two and nineteen. This is the uh, book of first Maccabees chapter two, verse nineteen. Then Matthias answered and spake with a loud voice. Uh-huh. Though all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him. So just to bring you up to speed, you may not be familiar with the book of Maccabees. Maccabees is during the Greek captivity, when the Israelites was in captivity under the Greeks. So now this is Mattathias, one of the leaders that rose up during that time, and this is him speaking to his sons and his people. Read. And fall every... And read, it, fall read it again from the top. Then Mattathias answered and spake with a loud voice. Uh-huh, so he spoke to the people in this, in this way. Read. Though all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him. So he said, even though all the nations under the king's dominion obey him, read. And, and fell away, every one from the religion of their fathers. It says, read again, this is, this is 1 Maccabees chapter 2 and verse 19. It's in the Apocrypha that the Protestant church removed in the late 1700s. Okay, what book you reading in the God? This is the King James Version. Show this here. Show the. I just he gonna show, he gonna show you. Read it again from the top. Then Mattathias answered and spake with a loud voice. Though all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him. You listen to this. No, this is this is your answer. You said what what is my religion? Read. And fell away from every from every one from the religion of their fathers. Uh -huh. And so they, gave consent to his commandments. Uh -huh. Yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of my fathers. So my religion, according to the Bible, is God's laws. My nationality is that I'm an Israelite. That's what, and that's what we are here to show you all, that you all also are Israelites. Our religion is the commandments of God. No. When, when, if, if, when someone says they're a Hebrew Israelite, it's like, it's like saying I'm a fake Israelite. Just to say it as plain as possible. Just, just to keep it plain. So... Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And I haven't studied this in a while. 
Uh-huh. So so we're we're always supposed to read the Bible on our own. But what we always have to remember, get first Peter chapter one and twenty one. Or is this second Peter? I think it's first Peter. Uh private interpretation. Oh two and two and Well, we always got to remember One and yeah. when we're reading, the Bible doesn't contradict itself. So if you read something in one spot and it's, it seems like it's different from another spot, that's not the right understanding. The Bible does not contradict itself. And a lot of times what happens today within the Christian church, everybody runs to Paul's letters when the way that Paul wrote you can, if you don't understand the old covenant, the history, you're going to read Paul's letters and you're going to get confused and you're going to teach things that's not in the Bible. Read that. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Uh huh. For the prophecy came not in the old time, but by the will of men. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So when we read the Bible, we have to understand that there's no private interpretation. The Bible explains itself. You have to go precept upon precept. Sometimes you got to go a little bit in the New Testament, back to the Old Testament, to the New Testament, and you get an understanding. But if you, if you read something in the New Testament and it contradicts something in the Old Testament, that's not the right understanding. Something's wrong. You need somebody needs to teach you what the understanding is, because, like I said, when you read a lot of our people, we read we read Paul's letters and we think that the laws are done away with. We think that we don't have to keep the Sabbath no more. We think that we don't have to keep the new moons. We, we think that we don't have to keep the, the thing. We think that, OK, it's OK to keep Christmas, but we don't know about Passover. It's OK to keep Easter and everything else that's set up here, but we don't know about Passover. We don't know about the Day of Atonement. We don't know about um, the Feast of Dedication. We don't know about, give me some other ones. Purim, the Lord Day of Assignment. We don't know about the holy days that God gave us in the Bible, but we know every holy day that's on this, on this earth. And a lot of our people don't even know that there's holy days in the Bible. That lets you know that the Christian church is not leading us in the right path. Uh-huh. Uh -huh, go ahead. Do you think we, do you believe we're in the last days now? Yeah, we're in the last days. Get Hebrews chapter 2. We've been in the last days since Christ came on the earth. We're getting closer because of the things that you see happening. There's wars and rumors of wars, so yeah. Just, just because. Yeah. Give me Galatians 4 and 10. Read that real quick. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 10. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 10. Uh -huh. Ye observe days and months and times and years. I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you, you, you labor in vain. So this is my question. I know. Say it again. I read that verse early when you told me you didn't receive that verse at all. And I'm going back to it because you brought it up. I want to address it. I want to address I don't want to just leave it on the table. I said I wasn't going to deal with it, but I'm dealing with it. I wanna, I wanna, my goal is to, to win my sister. My, I'm not here to, we're not here to, to uh, argue. argue and stuff like that. You Come brought it, you pulled the scripture, so I want to read it so that we can all be edified with it. So read, read it again. Ye observe days and months and times and years. Uh huh. I am afraid of you lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. So to, to bring this scripture in, in the, pro, the proper perspective, what was the reason that Christ came? What, was it, what, did, he, what, did, he, what did he come to fulfill? What did he come to do? To fulfill his uh, people, the chosen of the world. What, what he coming back for? No, what did he come to do when he came on the earth the first time? Do what it 
Okay, so let's see what that let's see what let's see what it is. Get um real quick, give me get Isaiah 53. Isaiah And I want to keep everybody to keep in mind. We read Galatians 4 and 10 where it said you observe days and months and years and time. He said, Paul said, I'm afraid of you. So that's we still on the same topic. We still in the same understanding, but the thing I want to give I want to give the proper understanding of that verse. Because we have to, this is we have to understand this part to understand what that verse is going into. Read that. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter fifty-three, and verse ten. Verse ten. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him; he had put him to grief. When thou makest us his soul an offering for sin, sin, he shall see his seed. Wait, read that. Read that part again. It said, "When thou shalt." When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. So, just I'm gonna stop at this verse, but it says his soul was made. He was made an offering for sin. How did the how did the how did our forefathers how did the how did they in the Old Testament how did they atone for their sin, or how did they offer? How did the how did how did they atone for how did they what's the word um how did they get forgiveness for their sins? Well, uh, different animals and, and, and whatever it is. Right, they sacrificed bulls, right. goats, doves. That's how they. So now here we read, it says, "Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him; he hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin." Right. So now Christ is the offering for sin. So now go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. So it says the law had a shadow of good things to come. If you're familiar with the Bible, you know that it was the shadow of Christ. So read on. And not the very image of the things. So, it was the, so the, the law, it was not the very image of the things. It was just a shadow. You just, just like if I'm standing in front of a light, you're going to see my shadow. You're going to see my silhouette, but you're not going to see me. So you're not going to have a fullness of how I look. Read. Can never with those sacrifices. Say which, it again. Can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually to make the comers therein too perfect. So, what two, so just a quick question. What two words do we want to pull out of this verse that correlate with each other? There's two different words, but they're saying the same thing. Sacrifice, that's one of them. And what's the other one? So I'm going to read it. Just, so verse 10, it says, For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Good things to come. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice and offering? Nope. So the sacrifice is going back to the word law. So it said, for the law, having a shadow, and then you jump down, it says, can never with those sacrifices. It's letting you know that it's referring to the sacrificial law. Now jump down to 8. Verse 8. Verse 7. Verse 7. Then said I, Lord. And you can, when you get a chance, you can read through the whole chapter. But we got to, because time's sake, we don't, time's sake, we got to jump, jump around. But read that. Verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Uh huh. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering of for sin that would is not. Uh -huh. Neither had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. So in the old covenant, we, sac we sacrifice animals and blood and bull and goats. The most high, it came to a point because we were not doing it in the right mind. We were sinning, and then we were going to offer the sacrifice, like, ah, oh, I can go sacrifice, and then go sin. But read on. Then he then and said then, he. Wait, and then it says, for sacrifice, burnt offering and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, meaning the most high rejected our offerings because our spirits wasn't right. Read. Then said he, 
Lo, I come to do thy will. So this is Christ speaking. He said, Lo, I came to do thy will, O God. Read. O God, he taketh away the first that he may establish the second. So it says he taketh away the first covenant to establish the first. When we read in verse 1, we, we seen this talking about the law of sacrifice. So when it's Christ, when it's saying Christ came, he came to take away the first to establish the second, he's talking about the sacrifice. He's talking about him becoming a sacrifice to the nation of Israel. Because he said, Lo, I come in the volume to do thy the volume of the book to do thy will. And then did I read where it said if you prepare the body? No, read on. It's, it's, it's the next part, next verse. Verse 10. By the which we well, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So Christ came to fulfill the law of sacrifice, meaning he came to be the sacrifice. So now we don't have to sacrifice no more, but we still have to keep the commandments. Now, back to the back to that verse. Go and read Galatians 4 and 10. Galatians chapter 4, verse 10. To observe days and months and times. Go to, and, go, start at verse 8. Verse 8. How bet, that, how bet then, when ye knew not God, ye did a service unto them which by nature are no gods. What service did they do to those that were not gods? What were they doing? So it says, it says, how be it then, when you knew, when you knew not God, Ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. What service were they doing? Huh? So they were sacrificing to other gods. Read on. But now, after that ye have known God. So it says now after you have known God, now you're returning to the Most High. Read. Or rather are known of God. Uh-huh. How turn ye again to the same, to the weak and the beggarly. Elements. So it says, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements? What are the beggar, weak and beggarly elements? The sacrifice. Read. Elements, whereunto you desire again to be into bondage. Uh-huh. Ye observe days and months. So now just the, so we established just by reading up a little bit that he's going over the sacrifice. He's talking about sacrificing. Now read verse 10. Ye observe days. And months and times and years. So it says, you observe days and months and times and years. What were we required to do on the Sabbath? I said, what were we required to do on the Sabbath? Church. We're supposed to go to, go to church or gather together. And what else? What's some other things that we're supposed to do on the Sabbath day? Keep it holy. What you say? Praying. Praying. Some of the specific laws, I'm going I'm to just say them. We weren't supposed to work. We were supposed to congregate together. We were supposed to congregate together. Just listen, sis. Just listen. So the congregate, which you said, go to church. Congregate. Uh, we weren't supposed to buy or sell. No cooking. Uh, what else? No working. No working. That, does that cover everything? Yeah, I'm sorry. No buying or selling, no cooking. No working and come ar come around and we be. I, I see you, sis. Let me finish the. Let me finish my point. Let me finish the point so I don't lose myself. Let me let me finish my point before I. And I'm. But those are the things. That's those are some of the things. But it's one more thing that we had to do on the Sabbath. We had to sacrifice. You no, know saying there was one more thing in, in addition to those things that I named. We also had to sacrifice. On the Sabbath. Yes. Go to Ezekiel 45 and uh, 17. No, we remember, we remember we sacrificed to God. We, we had to give, and we had to do those things on the new moons. On our high holy days, we had to sacrifice. Um, Let's start with 16. Uh, 17, read 17. Ezekiel chapter 45, verse 17. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings 
And the feast. And the feast, read. So and we gave offerings, we gave sacrifices in the, in the feast, read. And in the new moons. And in the new moons. And in the Sabbaths. In the Sabbaths, read. And in all solemnities of the house of Israel. And in all solemnities of the house of Israel, read. He shall prepare the sin offerings, and the meat offerings, and the burnt offerings, and the peace offerings, to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. So now, this is what the priest did in the, under the old covenant. The priest offered the sacrifices for the nation of Israel. And he did it on the new moons, on the feast days, on all solemn days, on the Sabbaths. So now, go back to Galatians 4. When you start at verse 8, it's talking about sacrifice. And you get down to 10, and he said you observe days and months and times. So what that's going into is sacrificing on the Sabbath days. We don't have to sacrifice no more, but we still have to keep the Sabbath day. We still have to keep the new moons. But sacrifice, because Christ came to be a sacrifice, we don't have to sacrifice no more, but we, do, we still have to keep the Sabbath day. So on the Sabbath day, we're still not supposed to work. You're not supposed to cook. You're not supposed to uh, buy or sell, and we're supposed to gather together. So we still have to keep the laws pertaining to the Sabbath, we just don't sacrifice on those days no more. That's what that scripture is going into. It's not talking about that we don't have to keep the days because we still have to keep those days. And what was your question, sis, with the, white, with the white hat? What was your question? Was it something about working? No. Okay. But did that make sense? So when we, like I said, when, when, when we read the Bible, you have to make sure that you're, that you're understanding it properly. Because if you're not understanding it right, which in case majority of the Christian churches, they're not, they're not teaching the Bible how it's supposed to be taught. And that's why when we look outside at our communities, our communities are in dire straits because the commandments of God are not being taught. That's the whole gist. That's the, the whole, uh, I briefly touched on Thanksgiving, the things that happened with Thanksgiving. We touched on uh, Christmas a little bit, and we went over a little bit of our history. I know some of you all came in a little later where you may have missed some of the stuff we talked about in the beginning about in Deuteronomy 28, basically in, in a gist. What we're, the main thing we're here for is to show you all that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are the Israelites according to the Bible. And we, the way we are able to identify that, get Deuteronomy 28 and 46. The way we're able to identify that is when you look at the curses that are in Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68, when you match them up to the history of, of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, our history matches what, that, what it said, what God said, the bad things that will come on the nation of Israel for not keeping his commandments. So that's, that's the gist, just in the, as a summary, that's what we brought out. But read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. So when it says they, it's talking about the curses shall be upon thee for a sign. This is Deuteronomy 28 and verse 46. Read. And a wonder. It's going to be on upon the Israelites for a sign and a wonder. Read. And upon thy seed forever and upon thy seed forever so as long as the israelites are breaking god's commandments you're going to be able to see these curses like some of the things we brought out where we're cursed in the city when you go across the cities across the world not just chicago and in, in america but when you go across the cities of the world and you see a people that's in that's living in worse conditions than everybody else Nine times out of ten, those are the Israelites because that's what we just read. It says these curses going to be upon the sign. Because when you look at a sign, how do we know we're on 103rd in uh, Peoria? Sure, sure. Sure. By a sign. So read it again. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. You know what? Read 45 to 47. Just read it. Read it straight through. Verse 45. So we can get the, so we can get the full picture of what it is. Oh, it's right up here. I don't know if y'all can see that. 
Moreover, moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkest, hearkest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and a wonder, and, and upon thy seed forever. So there we get it in full context. It's talking about when it says, when we get to verse 46, and it says, and they shall be upon thee, it's talking about the curses. The curses are going to be upon the Israelites. As long as you see where you see the curses, that those are the people of God. Those are God's children. The Israelites, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Some of the things that we just, in brief, some of the things that we showed were how, with the Native Americans, how this, the, the, the land was taken from them. The, uh, the cat, your cattle, and I'm paraphrasing it because we, we, ran, we ran out of time. But that's, what, that's, the, that's the, 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 the gist of what we were bringing out. And read real, real quick, one more. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Let's read that. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So it says, the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again. What were the Israelites doing when they was in Egypt? They were supposed to have been living. Living there in... Uh, they was living there, but what, what conditions were they in? Slavery. So it says, the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again, meaning that the Israelites will go back into slavery. It's not talking about the physical land of Egypt, because if you, if you know a little bit about the Bible, Exodus 14 and 13, God told the Israelites, you will never see them again. So we didn't go back into the physical land of Egypt. So that Egypt there is talking about slavery. Read. Again with ships. With what? With ships. How did we get over here? Ships. And also, just to correlate it, the natives were also taken as slaves on ships to Spain and Europe. If you don't know the, if you don't know history, they were also taken when the conquistadors came over here. They put them on slave ships and also took them over into Spain. This is, this is the Southern Kingdom slavery. It's some more, it's some images on there, right? Go, go ahead, because we all know about the. Blacks, but a lot of people don't know that the natives were also put on ships. Go, this is here. This is the natives being slaughtered on their own land. Go to the next one. Next one. Next. 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 I know what's a go to next. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Uh. Go to the next one. I was to the image. I want to show the image. Go to the next one. Ah, this ain't the edited one. Read it. Read it. Where are not speaking to thee? Thou so, shalt see it no more again. So the, na the nation of Israel will go into slavery on ships. Read. And there you should be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. So this is one of the curses that the Israelites will go into slavery on ships again. And then it says, by the uh, way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And it says, after you get off, get off those ships, you're going to be sold unto your enemies. What happened to us when we got off those slave ships? We were sold on the auction blocks. So this Bible is our history book. This is our heritage. And the only way to fix the problems in the black community is that we keep the commandments of God. A couple of the commandments, real quick. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. And these are basic ones. No, you know what? Get Leviticus 19 and 17 first. It's the Go, book of Read Levit 11 and then jump to 17. I'm sorry. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. Will we benefit, if we, if, 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 the, if we applied that in our community, would we not benefit from that? Yes. yes. Because when, when we steal, what's bound to happen when you steal something from somebody? You go to jail. What else? You get killed. Right. So we would benefit from that. So this is going back to what we said, and I'm not going to be too long-winded because we ran out of, running out of time. But we would benefit from that. So when... 
when the, when the message is put out there that Christ only gave us two commandments or Christ did away with the old covenant, you're throwing this out the window without knowing that that's what you're doing. Because now you're creating lawlessness because now people think, oh, all I got to do is give the beggar $10 when I drive past him, but I can go and continue to sell drugs. And then I can go into church and give my tithe and I'm good. That's the message that is put out there when people say, oh, you got to keep the whole Bible. But Christ only gave us two commandments. Oh, you ain't got to worry about that. You're not, you, you're not saved by your works. You're saved by faith in the blood of Jesus. No, you have to do the commandments. You have to believe in Jesus. You got to believe that he died for your sins, but you also have to apply the commandments. Read on, read that. It says, these shall not steal, neither deal falsely. Let's call them lying, because a lot of times the murders happen because somebody lied. So our community would benefit from that. So the laws, would, the laws are there as a discipline. The laws is supposed to be our religion because it's a discipline to keep us in order so that we know how to govern ourselves amongst each other. That's what when Christ said, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and then you should love your neighbor as yourself. And then he said, on, I'm going to paraphrase it. He said, on these two hang the law and the prophets. So I'm not going to steal from you because I love God and I love you as my brother. So I'm not going to steal from you. That's what Christ was saying. He wasn't saying, I'll give you some money and you wicked. You're doing all type of manner of evil. You, you're a wine old. You, you're you murdering people. And I give you some money because you're on the corner begging. So Jen, I'm saying that. I'm just using that as an example just to show us keeping the commandments will benefit our community. Jump to 17. Verse 17, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. We in Chicago, majority of y'all say y'all native to Chicago. There's a heavy spirit of hatred in Chicago. No, no, I know, but I'm saying Chicago because we're here in Chicago. It is everywhere, but in our communities, that's what we hate each other. So you my, you my elder, but you, you see news. You got brothers run up on older men and rob them because they think it's a sweet lick. It's like, but you, my elder, I'm supposed to be helping you, if anything, but we don't do that. That's, a, that's a hatred. It said, thou shalt, so the Bible says, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Can our community benefit from that? Yeah. That's a law. Read. Thou shalt not any wise rebuke thy neighbor. It said, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So if you stole something from me, and I find out that you stole it. What am I supposed to do? No. Nah. No, nah, I'm supposed to come and address you. I'm supposed to come and speak to you. Like, hey, I left my wallet on the table, and I looked on my camera, and I said, you took $10 out of my wallet. And I come and address you. Not come and address you like, hey, man, you took my, and I'm ready to shoot you. No, I come and talk to you. I come and rebuke you, correct you. Like, hey, bro, you weren't supposed to do that. The Bible say thou shalt not steal. That's me applying the commandments. And then you say, that gives you the opportunity to say, you know what, man, I was on hard times. My, I apologize, bro. Here go 20. Here go 30. Here, here go your money back. I, I won't do it again. And then in the future, I'm not going to leave my wallet out for you to take more money from me, but I'm going to forgive you. That's, that's what this scripture is saying. Read and not suffer sin upon him. And by doing that, I'm not suffering sin on you. I'm not allowing you to stay in sin. I'm giving you, I'm, I'm, I'm using the Bible to, to conflict resolve. So now you stole something from me. I came and addressed you. You repaid me. And then I tell you like, hey, bro, if you need something, just let me know. You my brother. I'll take care of you. And that situation resolved. Now we can move forward in peace. And we brothers. I ain't looking at you evil. You ain't looking at me evil but I'm damn sure not going to put no wallet on no table in front of you because I know that you battle with a, you, you got to, you got to, you got to, you battle with a spirit that you, you could be tempted to steal. So I'm not going to put that stumbling block in front of you. Read. Thou should not avenge nor bear any grudges against the children of thy people. This is not. It said, now it said, thou should not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. By me coming and talking to you, I'm not, a, I'm not coming to avenge myself because what happens in the streets of Chicago, Detroit, L.A., 
oh, you stole, you, you stole my, oh, I got to find this. We seen that in what, what was that, Minister Society? I got to go get my gun. I got to go get my, no, that's, that's you avenging yourself. Let's say I come to you and you be like, man, I ain't take nothing. And I got you on camera. No, you did take it. Man, I ain't take nothing. I ain't got nothing of yours. At that point, hey, I addressed you. I let you know. I walk away. I don't avenge myself because I know that God going to judge you. God, from that point, God going to take care of it. Because I tried to address you as my brother. You rejected it. Now, the most I got to take care of it. Read on. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as, as thyself. And that's how we show love. When Christ said you should love your neighbor as yourself, that means that I'm not going to steal from you. I'm not going to sleep with your wife. I'm not going to do none of those things. I'm going to apply the commandments to my brother. And then if, if you break the commandments or trespass against me, I'm going to come and talk to you about it and address you. I'm going to come to you and rebuke you. And, it, as a, and on the grand scale of things, the process in the Bible, when you look at Matthew 18, 15 and down, I come to you one on one, you reject it, then I go and get two or three witnesses and come back to you. If you still reject it, then we take it to the, the elders. And then you reject them, you put out of the community or the, 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 you put out of the nation, so to say, because you cut off because you don't want to be in line with what we got going on. So why be around us? So if we, if we applied those things in the, in the black community, that would fix our problems. Because what goes on is, I see you, we, what goes on in our community on a regular basis is that our young, we, we got young men getting murdered and killed because something happened and now they got to get revenge. Somebody killed somebody's brother, now the, now the cousin, hey, we're going to run down on him. And now it's just killing and killing and killing, then you got babies getting shot. But... If we just applied the commandments, and if the commandments were taught to us from a youth up, we'll know this is my brother. We are the same people. If I kill you, I'm, in essence, I'm killing me. But we lost sight of that as a people. But that's the that's what that's what we that's the nutshell of what we came, why we came here for because we are the Israelites. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Israelites, and we have to keep God's commandments. We have to repent. We have to turn away from idolatry, which is, in, which is it's a, a, a many ways you could label idolatry, but we have to come back to keeping God's commandments. What was your, you had a question in the back? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, about the neighborhood you said. Uh-huh. Now, years ago, we did do that. Right. So now, now I want to ask this question. As a, so you said we were doing it at one point in time. I know you, most of y'all probably remember the time that we were doing it. Why did we stop doing it? Because the parents. Huh? It's the parents now. We don't really have parents. You said, you said the parents now, but the parents now were the children of the people that were doing it. So... The parents now, so you got, we, we, we got generations, like I have a mother, my mother got a mother, her mother got a mother, well, you know, so, so I'm going to say that another way. I have a father, my father got a father, and so on and so forth. So where and why was, it, was there a disconnect to where now we're not doing it no more? Huh? And I heard you too. What you said is right, because we wasn't keeping the commandments. That's why we. The reason we in the problem, the the situation we in right now, and even then, even though uh, things were a little bit better as far as the family unit and things like that, it's still things were going on then that when we was being okay, we may have been co together collective, but what was going on? And that and that and that us being collective, what was going on? We were still being oppressed. So now we, more, we predominantly oppressing ourselves and we being oppressed. Then we were working together, but we still was being oppressed. The common denominator is we was not keeping the commandments of God. And we're not keeping our yeses or nothing. Right. And the, the, the reason why, the thing about it, the, 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 because a lot of the key, like I, I say it all the time, a lot of it, because I'm 39. 
still a young man. A lot of the children that's 20, 19, 21, that's running around and killing people is the, the sons and daughters of the people that I graduated high school with. Because when I was in high school, there was a lot of people that were 16 and 17 having babies. And when a 16 and 17 year old have a baby, and they in their mama house, who taking care of that baby? And the mama, the grandma, grandma taking care of the babies because the, cause the, cause the 16, 17 year old is in the streets. The 16, 17 year old is still trying to go to the club. So that means that, that child is missing because the grandma, most grandmas are not as harsh on the grandchildren as they were on their children. So the grandma, ah, oh, let them play. Ah, oh, let them have fun. And that baby going to grow up. As the scriptures say, that we're going to use the words of the scripture, that baby going to grow up and be a monster because he had no father, he had no discipline. So now he grow up and he's overly emotional because nine times out of ten, he grew up and he, the young man, he grew up where he was just under his mother. And no, no disrespect to no mother, and I'm not saying it because you, you all do the best that you can, but a woman cannot show a man how to be a man. Because a woman is predominantly emotionally led. A woman, for the most part, is going to lead with her emotions. Her decision making and things like that is going to come from her emotions. Men are more prone to make decisions off logic and reason. That's just how we were made. So when you take the man out of the house, that child is, is missing that, that level of discipline, that level of logic and reason. And then that child grows up. And all he see growing up is the emotions of his mother. So now that, that son is going to grow up and be an emotional man, meaning he's not going to grow up and be a man. He's going to be a 30-year-old boy. And as a 30-year-old boy, he has no rule over his spirit. Somebody do something wrong to him, he ready to fight or kill. And that's what we see going on in our communities. So the solution is us returning back to the commandment. Yeah. A man can't raise a son or a daughter. Right. He can do a good job, but he can't give that daughter what the mama can give. Right. So that's, that's the thing. So both parents are necessary. Because yeah. that son, he need his mother for the nurture, mm -hmm. the nurture part of it. Because a, a lot of times the man, no, this is it. I don't care how you feel. Boom. But the woman, the, the, man, the man and the woman got to be there. But same th with the point you said, a woman has to show a young woman how to be a woman. Mm -hmm. And the man just got to be there to be that balance of discipline. Vice versa. The man has to show a man how to be a man, but the woman got to be there mm -hmm. to nurture and show that care and affection mm -hmm. on a level that the father will not show. So it's that both parents got to be there to be able to, and both parents have to be there actively for them children to grow up. And that's what we see in our street. What we see in the streets is, and what, no, that's what I want to get, Genesis, um, Genesis chapter 49. Because what happened, like during the time, the Black Panther movement, things like that, during that time, we were working together. But what they do to disrupt that? They put drugs in the community. They broke all of that up. Anytime we, we came together, and the thing about it, I'm going to say it like this. Anytime we came together and the commandments was not included, they broke us up. Something came in to break it up. Because we was doing it, we had the right thought, but we was missing the most important factor. We was missing God. Because God is going to be the one that be like, nah, leave them alone. They doing what I told them to do. Leave them alone. Things, not saying everything going to be nice and peaches and cream, but the movement going to continue because God is there. Because we're keeping the commandments. When we're keeping the commandments, the movement it can't be stopped because God is going to make sure it's, it, it, he going to make sure his word come to pass. So we have to get in line with the commandments of God. What I had you get? Genesis 49. And yeah. Okay. Genesis chapter 49, verse 8. Judah, thou art the Judah, thou art he whom thy brother shall praise. Uh -huh. Thy hand shall be in the neck 
of thy enemies. Uh -huh. thy, father, thy, thy father's children shall bow down before thee. So just to be brief, Judah is one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Judah is the black, is the so-called the blacks of America. When they say that his hand that shall be in the neck of his enemies, that's going into the Black Panther movement. When we was fighting for rights and fighting for all of those things, a lot of the things that we have today is from us fighting during that time period. Read on. <clears throat> and we was fierce. We was fierce as a lion. We was fighting for things, fighting for justice, fighting for certain rights, and we was doing it together. So we got a lot of privileges from that. Well, read on. Well, the thing is, what happened? Read. Judah is a lion's whelp. All right, man, take it easy. Read. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Mm -hmm. He stood up. He crouched as a lion. So now it says he crouched as a lion. When it says he crouched as a lion, that, that means that lion laid down. That lion ain't got no more fight in him. And that's what happened to us. That's what happened. They put the drugs in. in the, so now a lot of our men turned and turned to drugs. When they turned to drugs, that turned to stealing. That turned to us hating each other. Turned to us killing. Everything went downhill. Read. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? And it says, and as an old lion. That, that, that's, well, you, that's how you know. Ain't no more fighting her. But then it says, who shall rouse him up? What's, gonna, what's rousing us up is what we're doing here right now. It's bringing us back to the commandments of God. So I, hope, I pray that you all receive something from being here today. Uh, I appreciate you all for actually sitting down and sitting through and actually listen, listening to us speak, listening to things that we had to uh, bring forth. Um, you all have a flyer. If you have any questions for us, if you want to know anything, you can go to our website. We also on um, YouTube, Facebook, if you all have those at platforms. And our f contact number is also on, that, on the back of that sheet. So those are ways you can get us. If you want to know about any topic, you can go on YouTube and you can type in, let's say you want to know about marriage. You can type in IUIC marriage and it'll come up. If you want to know, if you have further questions about anything that we brought up here, you can type in IUIC, whatever the topic is, and a video should come up of what, whatever that is. Uh huh. Um, thank you for coming. You're welcome. Um, we've been we've we just trying to go around. We the, our goal is to get this truth to all of our people. So we're going to nursing homes. We teach we teach on the streets. We go we trying to go to schools. We going everywhere we able. Whatever any, anyone allow us to come where our people are at. Thank you. Because All praises to the Most High. Uh, -huh. uh do you think uh no not do you think but like our neighborhood the kids and stuff uh they're gonna be held accountable yes get romans chapter uh three Rome, one more scripture real quick to answer that question you mean they're gonna be held accountable for their actions yeah. is it romans three that i'm looking for uh they without law they'd be judged by the law yeah, judge by law. That's uh, 13, is that 13? Yeah, that's it, that's it. 2 and 12. Read that real quick. This is the book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 12. For as many have sinned without the law, shall perish, all shall perish without the law. And as many as have sinned in the law, shall be judged by the law. So whether you know what the law is, and you, whether you know what the law is or you don't know, and you, if you break it, you're still going to be judged according to that work. But like I said, thank you all for having us here. All praises to the Most High that we had this opportunity to come. I pray you all learned something. So, um, so you enjoyed the uh, presentation oh, today? Oh, very much, very much. So what things did you learn uh, at the presentation that you can take back with you today? Uh, spiritually... I learned a lot. I learned a lot more than I thought I knew. You know, I got a lot of good information, you know, pretty enlightening. I all praises, it. all praises. So, mm -hmm. um, so when you heard the uh, message that you're Israelite and keeping the commandments, what do you think about that? Uh, I believe in keeping the commandments. I didn't realize I was an Israelite. I didn't realize that part of it. I I'm believe so, in trying to keep the commandments. All praises. Commandments. And some of the, um, the curses that you found out today. 
Well, I'm familiar. I'm familiar with the curses. I'm familiar with that. I really didn't learn that much, but I know we're under some kind of bad omen, like so. So, um, last question: um, Would you like to learn, continue to learn more? Um, oh and- yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get that Bible. I'm gonna start reading it a lot more carefully than I, than I have. So we just got finished with the presentation. Uh, can you explain or talk about some things that you learned today? Well, uh, majority like my religious, my religious is almost just the same. It's just a little different from what I learned today. But other than that, it's just about the same thing. Okay, okay. So it's just about the same thing as you was already learning. Yeah. Do you think this would be good for our youth and our communities to hear this message that we gave today? Oh, yes. Oh, definitely. That's what they need. That's what's missing with our young people today. Uh, they want to, you know, just, well, first of all, they got a bad attitude. See, they have the attitude have to be right. If the attitude is not right, they're not going to be right. So it would it do a lot of them good to help them, you know. Okay, now, um, before we go now, do you, not, do you know your nationality according to the Bible? What do you mean, my nationality? So your nationality, according to the Bible. So we went over who the curses applied to in the Bible, in the book of Moses. Now, do you understand who you are according to the Bible? Oh, uh, yeah. Who, who are you? I'm a man. <laughs> you a man? Okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to work on that. But uh, we appreciate your time, and uh, yeah, thank yeah. you. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 